Monologue 85, The Ministry of Communications, Kingdom 20. The Ministry of Communications shall have seven agencies as follows. 1. Literature and the Written Word, Books and Newspapers. 2. Television and Televised Media. 3. Fundamental Arts, Painting, Sculpting, Drawing, etc. 4. Musical and Acoustical Arts, Including Dance. 5. Radio and Wireless Media. 6. Internet Media. KCN as well as WWW at first. 7. Forms and Lectures. The communications of the nation of the beast in Babylon are filled with filthy imaginings, demonic expressions, and foul language. You will never be able to block them all, neither will you be able to counter their effects on your population. For the siren's call of Babylon and the venom of the beast will already fill the ears and hearts of the people of your land at the time you rise to power. But you can ensure that your voice is louder than theirs, and by your example, the results of your labors, demonstrate the righteousness of your vision. One tactic that is used by the children of the harlot is to set up radio stations that broadcast very powerful radio signals into any nation that does not conform to the will and vision of the harlot. Another tactic is to smuggle flyers and pamphlets into the nations of the archangels in order to undermine the moral and spiritual principles of the archangels and to seduce the godly to the immoral and materialistic desires of the mammon worshippers. The World Wide Web, the Black Widow's Web, sends innumerable expressions of godlessness and immorality, like a poisonous river, into every country of the earth, and pollutes every mind with bestial and incessant cravings of the flesh, and desires for the things of the world. By getting the people hooked on material wants, I want, I want, I want, the people become restless and are never contented with the simpler and more wholesome things of life. However, having said this, I will also state that religious broadcasting is often mind-numbingly dull and insulates people from the greater truths, being rooted in doctrines and political intentions that may have very little in common with God's actual will. I have said and I will say again that there is nothing wrong with technology. The worship and centering of one's entire life around technology and the way in which technology is used to corrupt and addict people to avarice and low ideals is what makes those technologies evil. Mind pollution is a very real and readily apparent reality in the current era, and by the pollution of the mind so the defilement of the soul and the spirit follows in turn. In matters of entertainment, it may surprise you to know that I make a distinction between artistic nudity and pornographic nudity, just as there is a difference between gratuitous violence and incidental violence within a story. It may surprise you further that there is no sin in discussing sexuality for educational purposes. If one were telling the story of a historical battle, or even a fictional battle, there may be no way to truly tell such a story without violence though violence should not be the goal of any story. Moreover, when violence is sterilized or removed from a story about war, then war is made to appear glamorous, and in showing war as it really is, with all its horrors and cruelty, war may actually be made less appealing and more repugnant. If one wished to make a movie about a thief, the thief can be made to look glamorous or heroic. Or one might focus on the victims of the thief as well as the consequences of a life of crime. If one wished to make a romantic story, one might choose to romanticize promiscuity and adultery. But why not instead romanticize love, faithfulness, and the beauty of a marriage between a man and a woman who are truly committed to each other? There are many dramas between married people, to be sure. Ups and downs are normal, and there are always struggles. However, is it not a wonderfully romantic notion for a couple to endure in marriage and grow closer throughout their years together? I will say further that there is nothing wrong with humor, and there are comical spirits even among the angels, for joy is divine and laughter is ascendant. Yet, how can depicting a religious figure flinging his own excrement at people not be offensive to religious people? Or why is it not offensive to any person of even minimal moral or ethical sensibilities? 
Why is it considered funny to intentionally desecrate and defile another person's religious belief and holy personages? Why must comedy be vile, sadistic, and utterly mean-spirited? What effect does such comedy have on the moral and ethical fiber of a people who are exposed to it on a regular basis? By humorizing abomination, depravity, and vileness, comedy thereby becomes a tactic to destroy morality, civility, and sacredness, blurring the lines by laughter, condoning all things poisonous and degrading the human spirit. However, one thing most religious nations of the past lacked was sufficient humor and the ability to laugh at themselves. A balance must be struck, a fine line walked, and laughter must abound with frequency, yet without the demonic forms thereof. There is an aspect to creativity present within a creative spirit which wishes to push the boundaries test the limits and peer into the darkest abyss of human nature and the bleakest corners of the human mind. There is also a tendency in humans to think in black and white terms, and yet shades of gray often become gateways to infernal reaches and lands of confusion. It is a difficult path to walk, the way of balance. Within the kingdom you will have to create your own movies, your own television shows, your own radio programs, your own media. Yet do not paint your society in drab colors and grim totalitarian grays. Do not be so blinded by zeal and purity that you cannot differentiate between the art of Michelangelo and the bile of pornographers. Do not be so dense as to put great works of literature into the same category as adult novels. Moreover, there must be a distinction between that which is appropriate for children or teens and that which is appropriate for adults, even as that which is not appropriate at all within a religious nation should be cut off without apology. Those who do not like the restrictions are free to depart with a wave and a smile. Those who know video games will know that there is a difference between Mario Brothers and the Evil Dead. Yet, why not allow video games in which the hero destroys that which is demonic, or where the lawful battle the lawless, or where good fights evil? There are many games, however, which encourage or do not discourage, and often fully require the player to engage in constant and gratuitous violence, mandating complete materialism and vanity by the goals of the game. Such games are filled with profanity and profane expressions of every form, continuously vomited and spewed forth in the presence of children, in ways that would make even many hardened and worldly people cringe. Some of these have also begun to openly cater to homosexual and transsexual audiences, and seem to promote bisexuality as fun experimentation. Around such games, millions of people build their entire lives, even to the point of cutting school, missing work, and sinking into a sick condition of mind-numbing obsession. In the realm of the global news media, far more insidious forces are at work. Corporate and political interests have turned many 24-hour news outlets into propaganda machines, and many news agencies will not report with depth on any story that might negatively affect the stock markets. Entertainment news, or tabloid journalism, with insubstantial stories and stories intended to keep one distracted with petty dramas and fluffy popular interest pieces, cloud the real news from around the world and keep people blind to what is really going on all over the globe. The death of a twisted pop icon is given more attention and time than the death of a war hero. Stories about Hollywood breakups are afforded more time than a standoff that might lead to thermal nuclear war. Worse still, demagogues with an axe to grind or an agenda to peddle are given hours of airtime to whip the masses into witless frenzies over things they can do very little about. In the kingdom, the press shall be free to report, but it is to be bound to facts and truth and must truly report and inform rather than peddling any agenda or opinions. The press should be as another agency of the Ministry of Truth, and are charged with watching the watchers. Indeed, every legal candidate for any office is to be given equal time, and no one will get more time than anyone else. However, any newspaper, radio, or television media outlet must be held to the moral and ethical standards of the nation, and may not seek to foment rebellion, 
save that facts themselves may cause consternation, in which case the media is not to be blamed and cannot be restricted. The people must be permitted to know what is going on within their own country and in the world beyond, and the media is to gather the facts and report the facts without opinion, judgment, or commentary of any sort, seeking to report all sides of an issue without leading or favoring or trying to entrap, but only asking for facts and reporting those facts. It is important to understand that musical forms are not to be an issue. If you truly examine every song ever written and sung for country music, and all the songs ever written and sung for heavy metal, you would find that there are more spiritual and more religiously related content within heavy metal than in country music. Though indeed the spiritual and religiously related material in heavy metal is often of a darker or critical nature. I use country music and heavy metal in comparison because many evangelical Christians seem to believe that country music is somehow holy while heavy metal is somehow evil. Yet within country music lyrics you can often find references to adultery, alcoholism, violence, and lifestyles based on bestial thinking and being, such as bar hopping, guns, and pursuing promiscuous relationships. That is not to say that heavy metal is superior to country, or that either one should be forbidden. Merely that content is more important than style. All forms of musical expression are to be permissible, but not all lyrics will be acceptable. That which glorifies immorality or that which might be termed satanic would obviously not be welcome within a religiously centered government or nation. And yet this does not mean that every song has to be religious in nature. Singing about love, hardship, the struggle within your soul, and any number of other non-religious subjects would be perfectly acceptable. In matters of literature, you must not be big-headed. In example, some might think that the writings of Karl Marx or the Socialist Manifesto should be banned. However, this would not need to be the case. Data, facts, history, knowledge itself is not evil. Indeed, Socialism, democracy, monarchism, militarism, even communism, these are nothing to me. You might combine the moral principles and spiritual vision of this revealing with almost any form of government, and the system I have given you is purely Orion rather than the only system that might be used. It is not political theory that aligns a nation to the beast, the harlot, or the dragon, but meanness, corruption, and godlessness that truly makes a political system infernal. I give unto you an ideal and set a mark to strive for, and yet no nation can truly reach it, though there is certainly value in the trying. The United States, Russia, even China, or any other nation on the earth can, if having sufficient will and support among the people, become the holy nation. There is no chosen people of God, only chosen people of archangels save those who choose and claim the favor of God and heaven as their own by their collective thoughts, words, and behavior. What is and is not permissible as far as literature is again a matter of balance and wisdom. You cannot ban history. You should not rewrite it or try to cover it up. You have simply chosen to make history and to deviate from the popular conclusions and trends of present historical views. The agency of forums and lectures is about public speaking, and I very much encourage you as a people to build a society where the ancient idea of public forums is adopted and refined to its highest degree in expression. Artistic expression is essential to the health and well-being of a nation's soul and spirit, and without it a nation is dim and partly dead. In all matters of communication be wise, balanced, and fair. Religion need not be ignorant. Without excuse or justification, the Ministry of Communications will be responsible for keeping communications networks running efficiently and safely, as well as censoring media content overall.